Ooh. Vegans aren't weak. Vegans are strong. <laughs> So you're known as America's healthy heart doc. So why aren't you just America's heart doc? Um, and why are cardiologists not promoting health? They're just fixing. That's an excellent question. Uh, it's a whole paradigm shift that's going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. Bring about a real serious change. In fact, if we could start all over, I saw a sign on the streets in New York once, can we just unplug and reboot the whole world? Because that's literally, if you could unplug and reboot the whole world, there wouldn't be any USDA subsidies to support foods, make them inexpensive that promote disease. There would be, if there's subsidies at all, to foods that promote health, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes. You know, you wouldn't have pharmaceutical companies having such an influence and big food companies that have no real health agenda for America in general having such major influence on Congress, on laws, on marketing and really such. Strong yeah, so you know, you take an average medical student of any discipline, resident, doctor in training. I mean, they're gonna see pharmaceutical representatives, they're gonna go to grand rounds that not always, but often are sponsored by major medical and other companies, uh, certainly not health movements. Uh, if they go to conferences, there's gonna be a broader array, but you still, are dominated by dollars and dollars and dollars that don't always represent you know, the best of America's interests and certainly don't represent what I like to call upstream or preventive medicine. I mean, you need to teach medical students, which is what's starting to happen. You know, that diabetes type two isn't always, but is largely choices on fitness and lifestyle and environment and genetics. But, you know, we should, from the beginning, the first sign of a high blood sugar be asking those questions. That's not what they're taught. Yeah, what they're they taught, is it, you know, is it metformin or is it Genuvia or is it one of the newer drugs and such? So we do need to unplug and reboot. It's just going to take, I hope a generation is enough to really see this transform, but it's better than it was 20 years ago. I think even just within the last 10 years, there's been a huge progression. Um, I, I wouldn't call it huge. You're seeing the change. <laughs> Those of us we'll say the, uh, baby yeah, steps. Yeah, it's not only a plant-based, you know, um, raising of awareness in the medical world. And when you're in the plant-based movement, you see it. But in the bigger picture of medicine in general, it's a tiny little slice. But you're seeing it in what I like to call lifestyle medicine, integrated medicine. Um, you can call it holistic. That's kind of a woo-woo word. But the idea that sleep and fitness and stress and even air quality, water quality make a huge difference in development of disease and management. That's coming into medicine, but it's still, there's a thousand people at the American College of Lifestyle Medicine meeting, and there's 35,000 just at the American College of Cardiology, and then all the other specialties. So we are still drops in the bucket. I have many good colleagues that are cardiologists that are healthy, uh, but it was barren territory eight years ago when the Reader's Digest magazine asked me to write for them and gave me that title. It was, it was just, nobody was, promoting other than the science of Dr. Ornish and such. So I happily said, okay, great title. I don't mind. It's a big responsibility and I'll share it with anybody, but you got to do the hard work every day. So speaking about the hard work, when did you have the aha moment to adopt a whole food plant-based diet? And then how did you, when did you start integrating that into prescribing a whole food plant-based diet yeah, to well, your patients? We're sitting in the shadows of a famous church. So, I mean, I sort of feel obligated to tell the truth. Uh, <laughs> this is the confession this, happening. <laughs> this is, is I, I'm not plant-based. I'm plant. Actually, that is true. I don't call myself plant-based. I'm plant diet because there's nothing else. And uh, actually, I grew up in a household in suburban Detroit that kept kosher, no pork, no meat and cheese, uh, and almost always honored that outside the house growing up as a kid. First week, Ann Arbor University of Michigan, 1977. That's a long time ago. The only thing in the cafeteria that worked was a salad bar. And it actually was an amazingly nice salad bar. So that week I stopped eating everything. And it's interesting, I went home a couple weeks later. Um, you know, no cell phone, nothing. You couldn't, but my parents had gone to the Pritikin Longevity Center in Santa Monica. And my mother, amazing cook to this day, thank God, very vibrant and very alive, um, started making lentil loaf instead of meatloaf. So I'm eating salad bar at college. She's making lentil loaf and it just clicked. And as I was in medical school, and I actually had a struggle with uh, how to eat plants when you're in Dallas, Texas training, a real, real meat town. And 
Kansas City, Missouri, which is KC Masterpiece, a this real barbecue This all sounds like town. amazing barbecue yeah, destinations. Yeah, exactly. Well, I did, you know, baked potatoes with KC Masterpiece sauce on it, but it was a bit of a struggle. By then, I was married, raising kids, and my wife uh, had actually been there at the very beginning undergrad, same week, so she was on board completely. Um, so it's been a 42-year journey of, you know, totally plant-based, and in retrospect, I'm very proud of it. It's worked out unbelievably well for her health, for my health. It wasn't brilliance. It was just responding to a situation. But as soon as I saw that there was science that fit into my cardiology medical practice, I not only, you know, completely confirmed this is where I was going to be forever, and it is, um, but I started teaching it to patients. So really since 1990, when I started practice 30 years, my heart patients knew there's no better time to talk to a patient about their diet than when I've got a needle in their groin, doing their catheterization, putting in their stent. I've got 30 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever it is, and they're very receptive when that needle's in their groin. I think it should just be, you know, part of the standard program. So you got heart disease. Dr. Khan's got a time to talk to you. <laughs> but anyways, it did. It converted a lot of people over. In addition to your practice, you are also an author of some provocative titles like The BS Diet right. and Dead Execs. Don't get, Don't bonus. get bonuses. Right. And Vegan Sex. And Vegan Sex. That's so, right. Do vegans have better sex? And if um, so, how does the heart have to do with that? Um, absolutely. Swipe right for a vegan. You'll be pleased for the rest of your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Scientifically, it should be the case. Now, we always got to make the dis distinction, too. There's crappy vegan foods and crappy vegan complete diets, and there's healthier versions. And I'm always talking whole food plant diets. If you eat whole food, plant diets long enough, you are so much more likely to have healthy arteries, fancy words, healthy endothelium, fancy words, healthy nitric oxide, all the PowerPoints that drive good sexual health, rumored better body odor, less bacteria, microbiome on your skin, friendlier. We certainly think we have a healthier microbiome in our uh, large intestine, but it's probably true on the skin and sex organs. All kinds of other statements on the internet about body taste and all kinds of things get saucy and racy. But it should be no doubt that uh, long enough. You know, a lot of people say I've adopted a whole food diet since the Game Changers came out recently, since I saw What the Hell two years ago. That's awesome, but it may take a little longer to rebuild some of that damaged arteries and all. So um, there is some data, testosterone levels in men that eat whole food plant-based are very healthy. And at least some data says at least as good, if not better than the other average Americans, that component of sexuality. Um, the other thing is, you know, vegans can be pretty fun, great people. You know, some throw pain on you if you wear fur coats. I actually think that's pretty awesome, but I don't do it myself. Uh, some go to pig vigils and farm vigils late at night because they care so much about the pain that animals are feeling that they'll do crazy things late at night, including probably Academy Award winner to be Joaquin Phoenix in LA will go at midnight and go try and bring comfort to animals. I think that is such a testimony to what an awesome human being he is. Um, but just the average plant eater, you know, I have a meme that says, you know, vegans are just trying to suck less. Uh, but nonetheless, that should make you a more interested and uh, an excited lover and sexual performer. Are there men with- So are you taking volunteers for that, uh, for that case study? I want every one of them. Well, actually, if it's funded, Dr. Robert Osfeld in New York City, where we're sitting in Montefiore, does plan a prospective study of men with erectile dysfunction put on whole food plant diets, or I hope Standard. like an American Heart Association better than average diet. Uh, and we'll be doing actual studies like was featured in the documentary, The Game Changer. So we may actually get science. We, we are not, you know, we are not overwhelmed by the amount of science we have in that. But anytime you look at it, the basic science or the actual clinical science, it's not going to be bacon or fried chicken or, or, you know, steaks that are going to promote better sexual health. And I'll finish on this. There's this classic study that was done by uh, Dr. Robert Vogel, a cardiologist, my mentor, but also uh, at the time he did it at University of Maryland, where he took healthy volunteers and fed them a sausage egg McMuffin breakfast and fed them an oatmeal breakfast a week apart. And he had an apparatus on their arm that looked at blood flow and health of their arteries. These were young, healthy people. Within an hour and seven hours of the oatmeal breakfast, no change in blood flow, good, healthy function. Within an hour of the sausage egg McMuffin, right in the yellow bag, right on a McDonald's carryout, 
there was a drop in blood flow for four hours. It was profoundly important, measured in an arm artery, and then it took about three hours to come back to baseline. Yeah. So if nothing else, have a salad before you shag. Being a doctor, what are some of the challenges, if any, to promote specifically a whole food plant-based diet versus a vegan diet, which includes yeah. the fried foods and processed yeah. foods and, you know, can be more Unfortunately, when you take a survey of the restaurants in the United States that are serving plant foods but are crushing it, you're looking at the low end of health spectrum. So uh, I'll say names. I, I give so much credit out uh, credit to uh, the slutty vegan food truck mm -hmm. and now brick and mortar restaurants in Atlanta, and they're crushing it hours and that. I just couldn't serve that. Uh, you know, cafe. And that's because it's fried. It's so heavily fried, and uh, you know, Chloe by Cafe Chloe, yeah. by Chloe in New York. Well, Expanding. now she's in international. They're, I know they're all over the place, London. So a lot of really smart people, just in the food conversation in general, say, instead of what? So if you're using lard, ghee, and butter, we don't know this for sure, but is coconut oil a better chase? choice? Of course, it's plant-based, but it's not lower in saturated fat. It's higher in saturated fat. It might have a different balance of various long-chain saturated fatty acids, which is very complex biochemistry, but it's not lower. Looking at you know all the literature, they generally say we are not recommending coconut oil for people with health issues, and we're not certain it should be a component of an overall healthy diet. I don't know that we need those debates. The debates we need are crap junk American diet in schools and hospitals and business places versus all the cleaner diets that include fruits and vegetables, whether they're 100% or not.